Welcome back to the sorcery playthrough of Elden Ring, everyone. Uh, in today's episode, I came back to right here after Stormvale Castle because there is a scroll hill that here that we need to collect. I totally forgot about this until I read upon it, and fair point that this is something I should be getting. This is the Academy Scroll, and I think if I'm not mistaken, it should be located in this little graveyard here. It's not that, but we'll find it soon enough. So basically what this will allow us to do is unlock some of the more advanced uh, Rhea Lucaria, Glintstone type spells, which is actually super, super useful. Super useful because we have some pretty tough bosses that we'll need to tackle right here. All right, there it is. I can already tell it's that, yeah, of course. Of course it is. So, we're done here. All we need to do is outrange the enemies and we can teleport to where we need to go. Cool, and where we need to go is the Church of Vows. Finally back on this playthrough, I'm back from my vacation, it was really good. The weather is insanely hot right now, uh, sickeningly hot, we should say. Uh, it's been like that all week, it's a giant heat wave going on, so that's nice. But it's the perfect time to play some Elden Ring, and these are the things we want. So we can pick up the Swift Glintstone Shard, which is the spell that those sorcerers use. You know how I was mentioning that? They're really annoying uh, that I can't like outspeed their spells. Well, it's because they're using the Swift Glintstone Shard, which the deal with this spell is that it deals less damage than Glintstone Pebble, but it's way, way quicker. So we can do a little demonstration of it. The other thing we can do a little demonstration of is this thing, Shatter Earth. This is something I picked up uh, in the Crystal Tunnel. I went there to get some upgrade materials and also some souls as well because I'm running low. Yeah, this thing is insanely quick. But as you can see, the damage ain't the best. Let's see if we can... God, that thing sucks. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling this spell would suck, and it kind of does. So yeah, those are the two things it's worth showing, but we're not going to dwell on these too long. Uh, because we have bigger and better things to move to. Specifically, the two other things he sells. Which is... Great Glintstone Shard and Glintstone whatever that I don't have the intelligence for. This Great Glintstone Shard, this is the one we want. It's 2k, which I think I do have enough for 2k. Exactly. Let's get this because this is going to all be a part of my plan. Which I will explain in just a second. I just gotta switch out them sorceries. Also, I did some arranging uh, for my spells. I have them like basically not in order of importance, but organized more. So, my master plan is to continue in Celia. You guys know, I think I mentioned this, right? That I went into a part of Celia. Uh, and started this quest line. The only issue was that was the recording that got lost, so we're gonna have to do a little redo on that. Actually, I'm stupid because I just realized I have the Aeonia Swamp bonfire or whatever side of grace unlocked. Actually, I have my volume up as well, which I shouldn't, which I shouldn't have. Uh, so we're gonna go there instead. Yeah, by the way, the reason there was no episode all weekend after I was back is something broke, like, while I was gone. I don't know, like a goddamn poltergeist or something got into my setup and the audio got messed up really badly. Uh, the recording audio. 
which is if you do YouTube, uh, you'll know that that is the single most annoying thing that could possibly happen when you have a setup that works. You have everything adjusted perfectly and uh, she just breaks. I don't know why. I genuinely don't know. I'm suspecting it might be because of my... Maybe because of my mixer. I had, do have a mixer and it's an older one. And I'm afraid it might be dying or something. I hope it isn't because it's a good mixer too. So, I don't know. Anyways. What we're going to be doing is tackling Commander Nile, which with this guy, the key is Great Glintstone Shard. As in, well, it's not the biggest key, but when you're this powerful, you have this spell, you can basically tackle him. Uh, that's why I'm going to be basically spell spamming him to death. Uh, don't expect anything else. He's really powerful. Um, and yeah, that's the wrong spell. See, told you it's really powerful. Sorry, Nile, but it's gotta be done. <sighs> gotta be careful not to miss with this thing. It should be enough, my FP and all that. See, this is why you gotta be careful. You gotta be real careful with him. And people who might get pissed off <laughs> that I'm doing this, listen. I am 100% okay with using the build as intended. This is a sorcerer. He's meant to be spell spamming. He's meant to be a spell spamming bitch. That's his whole MO. And, you know, thinking back now, when I was doing previous sorcery playthroughs, I realized that I was sometimes hesitant to use my spells, because there's, like, such a... like, level of vitriol for using magic sometimes with people that it's kind of insane am I not going to be able to get him? I should. it should be just okay we gotta be real careful here and that is an understatement and I missed a spell don't worry I always have a backup Is he dead? How is he not dead? You should be dead. There we go. You're dead. So that was Commander Nile. Um, he's actually fairly tough. Jesus, he only gives 12k? Man. I keep saying this, like, playing the other Souls games compared to this, the sort of enemy soul drop ratio is messed up in this game. I don't know if people have noticed, like, I defeated a big boss, a difficult boss, a major boss, and I didn't even get enough uh, souls to get a level. It's, it's, it's a bit of a weird one, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, it's always been a bit weird. Anyways, what this will allow us to do is continue the quest line. Where we need to... where do we need to go? Let me think about this for a second. Oh yeah, we need to go back to him. He's gonna give us the scroll, which I already know the solution to this. So it don't matter, but... Whatever, let's get it. And then... We can advance. This guy is mad sus, by the way. I know, he. I think he's a spell dealer as well. So we'll see what he does, or what he has. Yeah. 
all we need to do is do a little reset. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna save your time here. All right. What do you got to say? God, he's so creepy. He has cool armor, though. Okay. Can I buy... Can I buy spells from you now? Hmm. I don't know. No, he doesn't. Okay. So the question is, I think you can just walk through Celia, right? You don't need to do that shit with the unlocking to get to that cliff. It's been a while. Not a huge while, but it's been a while. This area is annoying though, because there's so many enemies spamming shit at you. Ah, oh, and there's dead ends too. Look at these bitches with all their spells. Basically got the same setup as me. I have that going. Oh yeah, this is here. This is very useful. And yeah, you do need to unlock this shit, don't you? I remembered now. Ah. Don't worry, it's not a big thing. And I think this is something that I didn't really show in the previous episode. Uh, not previous episode, previous playthrough, what am I talking about? This is some like real Skyrim shit you do here uh, with your horse. So this is the first one. It's always three. You guys know it's always three. And these all correspond to particular ones. But I don't know which one corresponds to which. So the easiest thing to do is just unlock all three. Actually, the second one... <sighs> Skyrim. I still haven't bought Skyrim. There's currently a Steam sale going on and... I'm... People always shit on me because I haven't played Skyrim. And I haven't picked it up yet. It was really cheap. The remastered version. One day. I did pick up Fallout New Vegas, which is another one of those classics that I just kind of missed out on. And people always shit on me for not having played Fallout New Vegas. Ah, that's the one. Well, the thing is, while I'm here, I might as well... I might as well get the third one as well and show it. But yeah, I promise you guys, one day... I will own Skyrim. Whether I will actually play Skyrim, that's another thing. Uh, I have a massive back catalog of games. I'm gonna be honest with you. Currently, I'm trying to work my way through Salt and Sanctuary. Which is a game I'm honestly kind of having mixed feelings on right now. You can definitely tell it was one of the first Souls clones and one of the first 2D. What the hell was that? Okay. No, don't fall off. I know what to do here. You need to get this thing with sorcery. Told you. Interestingly, it didn't give a sorcery Ash of War. Whatever. Yeah, so that's one thing. I'm playing through Final Fantasy Tactics again. I need to finish Plants vs. Zombies. I've replayed that. Then finish, like... That game cannot be finished, but, you know, like, unlock everything. I need to... I have a Demon Souls playthrough going. And then let's not even get started. I bought No Man's Sky like two years ago and I haven't even touched it. But that's the classic thing, you know. You have that FOMO going with the Steam sales. It's, it's well done, I gotta say. I gotta give props to Valve. I mean, 
it gets you. You're like, oh man, that game is so cheap. And that's why I'm hesitant sometimes to pick up Skyrim. But the other aspect of it is as that you might as well have it with you. I mean, it, it doesn't disappear, you know. Well, it shouldn't disappear. Who knows what will happen. If games will ever go the Netflix way in. On Steam. Oh yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. And maybe it's worth mentioning that this spell... The Great Glintstone Shard, it doesn't track nearly as well as the normal one. We do got a Sacred Tear here though. Hold on Millicent, I'll get to you in just a second. I just have some flasks to upgrade. I can't add a charge, that's fucked up. Oh well. Alright, let's do this. She has a lot of dialogue. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, no, I, I, I fucked up her quest line. I don't think I finished it. Well, there isn't something add to add to the list. We have averted our eyes. What the? Hell? Oh yeah, because she makes noises. She makes anime noises. Um. And then we got a rest. And she's Gucci. She's totally like, of course, the interesting thing about her is that she wears the same outfit as Melina does. And she, her name begins with M. So there is some lore going on there. All right. This is the thing that increases dex, I think. All right, here's what we need to do. We need to head back to Gaur or whatever his name is. Gauri. Oh. Wait, I didn't do this the last time around, did I? I didn't know he was gone. Where did he go? Hmm. I, because I was almost a hundred percent sure that he is a spell, that he sells spells, but apparently not. Maybe I was wrong. Okay, here's what we need to do. Uh, there's a boss here, a fairly easy boss, I think, uh, that we need to tackle and then allocate flash charges. Mm, let's go with this setup for now. We can level up, let's get to 25 HP. I feel like we really need that. It's still incredibly low uh, for this stage in the game, but we do have spells. And what we need to do is... What do we need to do? I mean, as in, I know what to do, but how do you get to the boss? That's what I'm thinking. Is it this door? No, that's that door. You might be thinking that I'm an idiot and that's because partially I am. There it is. Okay, so these are the two Nox warriors. The two people from Bloodborne. Ouch, couldn't dodge that, could you? Didn't think so. Who has the more powerful sorcery? I do. That is a really cool weapon though. I don't think the boost set is that cool when you use it. 
which is a bit of a typical thing. It has some moves that do that. The... The like... God, this is, this is Bloodborne. Uh, that do the whip thing, but not all of them. Cheap. You shouldn't have the Bloodborne dodge. This is straight up the, the phantoms, or what are they called in Bloodborne? The trio, you know. You know which one I'm talking about. Shadows of Yarnum, I think. And we have Lusad's Glintstone Staff, another really advanced uh, Glintstone Staff. As you can see, it needs 52 and 10 strength, which I didn't know. Staff of the Primeval Glintstone Sorcerer Lusad, only those who have glimpsed what lies beyond the wisdom of stone may wield it. Enhances power of all sorceries, but consumes additional FP. So this one is interesting because that doesn't actually sound too terrible. When you think about the fact that by the time you will get to 52 intelligence, you're likely gonna have uh, MP out the ass or FP out the ass. So when you think about it, the fact that it consumes additional FP isn't really the most terrible thing considering what it gives you, which is enhanced power for your spells. It's something worth thinking about. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try sniping this bitch. That does like no damage still. Why does that still do so? What the fuck? Are you kidding me? Okay. Never mind. Ignore what just happened there. That was some of the biggest bullshit I've ever seen. Did you see the damage that breath attack? It just clipped me. It knocked me off of torrent. And it took literally 95% of my HP. So I think the lesson learned here is don't fuck with Exekis or whatever his name is. At least not yet. Unbelievable, man. So you, you guys know what I'm going for or who I'm going for. Uh, Mr. Radon, we're gonna have to bite the bullet after a while and try tackling Radon. Oh, fucking hell. I hate horse combat. Four? Now you need more than four. Yeah, we're just gonna have to, like I said, bite the bullet here. And it's not gonna be easy. Blast him. Man, that doesn't deal near as much damage as you'd think. Oh, fuck. These things are the most annoying enemies. Like, seriously. There's a ton of them, too. I died here last time around, by the way, which I... I you probably saw. And I swear to you, these ones with the red eyes, they have more HP. Just ins it's just insane. The damage is insane. I think it, the best thing to do is just skip these things. Just run through them. That damage is nutty that they do. Where does this put us? It's so confusing. Sometimes when you activate a stake of Marika and it puts you behind and it fucking impossible to avoid them too. I know I'm just like ranting on these things, but Jesus. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump through here. 
GG's torrent. Is that gate not active? Did I see that correctly? Hold on a second. Huh? Okay, I'm thinking really hard now. What the hell it is that I missed. Because this teleports you into Redmain Castle. Hold on, come on Mr. Sketchhead, use your brain. I like legit do not remember. I feel like I've done most of what's possible. I mean, obviously not. Gonna have to Google it. I'm just gonna get on top of this because maybe this holds the solution. But I don't seem to remember it holding it. Oh, fucking seriously? Can you, like, not be the strongest enemy? There we go. I was trying to parry him, but... That didn't exactly work, did it? Um... Okay. This does not hold the solution. Oh, hey. Actually, I haven't looked at my talismans for a while. It raises attack power of arrows and bolts. I was... I would have guessed that, honestly. Okay, yeah, so I'm the idiot. Uh, you need to visit the Grand Lift of Dectus and activate parts of the lift to be able to safely enter Redmain Castle. So I totally didn't know, know that. I, I'm guessing there's probably a way in, an alternative way, but I thought it was possible to do Radon much earlier. Not that that's much of an issue. I mean, we can easily get going uh, on the path to, oh hey there, Bok, and do the grand lift stuff. It's no problem. I'm just thinking about his quest line now. Why he or does he appear at like every major location? I don't know. Anyways, what we're gonna be doing again is continuing on for a little bit. I'm getting towards the end of this episode, but I want it to end on a semi-interesting note. God, the tracking is so much worse. Like, actually so much worse. And he deals so much damage. Yeah, come on, charge at me. 
Didn't think so. All right, horse, you get to live. I think what we can do now is what well, not not now. What we can do is just head to the church. And I feel like that's a good place as any to end it. As in, not like that, but end the episode. Look at these fools. Oh, the tracking. The fucking... I just realized this is the same moveset as the, uh, the Lothric Knight. I totally just put it together. And there's a lot of reused animations in this game. I mean... I say more power to you. You have them assets, use them. How good is this on Wake Up? It's pretty good. Yeah, well, this is a fairly good tactic. I think people used to do this in PvP too. In like Dark Souls 2 especially, I remember it, where you would knock the opponent down with like a parry or something. And then you would charge a spell or like set up a spell, like Firestorm or something. You know, and as they were getting up, if the RNG Jesus was on your side, uh, you would essentially just hit them. And it's a fairly solid way of dealing damage. And it can be done in PvE as well here. Excelente! I think this is as good a place as any to call it a day. This seems to be like the episode ender because last playthrough I ended it here the exact same way. So I think what we're gonna do, yeah, is wrap it up. We'll head to the Grand Lift of Dectus. I have the Fort Hate version of the medallion. We can pick up the Kaelid version, which is fairly easy. And then we can actually get to Redmain Castle and see if Radon is doable. I have my doubts, although I honestly found Radon pretty easy on my first playthrough. Uh, but this playthrough with my HP, who knows, honestly. He does deal a lot of damage, and I totally did not know there's a merchant here. Oh, this leads to... Okay, you can go down here to that path, which gives you the alternative way up to the Altus Plateau. In case you didn't know that there is one. Hmm. This is... I'm gonna get that. That is a pretty good looking shield for this build. I mean, it's slightly better. And slightly worse in some aspects. The physical damage negation, it looks like... Nipple shield 3.0. I know it's supposed to be an eye, but whatever. So yeah, what I'm going to go ahead and do is wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sorcery playthrough for Elden Ring. And yeah, we'll pick it up from here next time. Take care and goodbye.